All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here uh, this week for our Employer Education Summit, whether this is your first session that you're joining us for or if you've been able to join some of the others. We're so appreciative of the fact that you are here. Uh, my name is Courtney Pelfrey, and I'm one of the assistant directors on Career Services Employer Relations Team. Um, and you will not be hearing much from me today because I want to give the majority of our time for you to be able to hear from our fabulous students who are on the panel today, as well as from our wonderful moderator, who I will be turning it over to in just a moment. Um, and so with that said, just a couple of housekeeping things. Certainly we ask that you just stay muted so that our students have a chance to speak throughout the panel. And we've got some pre-selected questions to ask of them and they'll be responding to those, but then we hope to have a few minutes at the end of the session for you, our employer partners, to ask any additional questions that you may have. And so that's what we're gonna jump into now. We'll get these wonderful students introduced um, and then we'll move into our questions. So with that, I'd like to introduce our moderator, Jasmine Carter, who is on our career development team. And Jasmine has um, the, the privilege of working with these amazing students day in and day out. And so um, who better to moderate this type of a panel than Jasmine? So Jasmine, I'll turn it over to you um, so that we can get our students introduced. Thank you so much, Courtney, and welcome today to everyone. Welcome if this is your first day. If you're returning, we're so happy to see you all here. But without further ado, let's introduce these fantastic students, starting with Julian. All right, hello. Uh, sorry, I couldn't find the mute button for a second. Uh, I am a uh, Julian. I'm a political science uh, and human communications double major at here at UCF. Um, a little bit of my background. I am Colombian and proudly Colombian. Um, I uh, love uh, everything that has to do with politics and social justice and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, I am a junior here at UCF right now, uh, and I'm really excited uh, to finish up and move on to whatever's next. Perfect. Alexia. Oh, hello. Good morning, everyone. Almost afternoon. My name is Alexia Paratino, Alexia Paratino, if you like to say it in Spanish, and I am a criminal justice and psychology major here pursuing the psychology clinical track. I am a first generation college student as well as a zero generation immigrant, meaning I was not born here. I am from Venezuela and I'm getting my citizenship in a year or so excited for that. This past year, I was the president of Land Alpha Epsilon, a criminal justice organization, a mentor for Crear Futuros, which is a Hispanic based first generation college student mentorship program, and was also in the appointed board for uh, psychological society at UCF and an undergraduate assistant for a research program with Jill Biglione in the criminal justice department. And this upcoming semester, I will continue into my second year of presidency into Lambda Alpha Epsilon in the my first year's president of Alpha Phi Sigma. So anything and everything criminal justice, feel free to ask me. Wonderful, and Jasmine. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jasmine Jimenez. I'm an integrated business student at the University of Central Florida. My Something I'm involved in at UCF is Delta Sigma Pi, which is a professional business fraternity. I've been in the fraternity for about two years now, and I've held two executive positions, one being vice president of community service and the other vice president of sponsorship. And I've been a uh, part of the career services team for about a year as well. And I totally love the supportive system we have going on there. And in the past, I was involved in She's the First, which is a nonprofit organization that's education in third world countries. Totally love that. And I'm currently a marketing intern at a fashion design company called Heart of Swim. Swim. It's here down in Miami. Hi, everyone. My name is Jamar. I'm a um, I am a graduate student at UCF on the health administration track. I am actually graduating this upcoming August. I previously worked for Orlando Health uh, pre-COVID, and I'm currently interning at a tech startup called Andor Health, um, working on the sales operations side. Awesome. And I'll jump in here. Uh, Nakia Moore is not able to be with us today. And I thought that it was important to introduce Nakia on her behalf because the reason she can't be with us today is actually because she is serving in jury duty. And she was so bummed that she couldn't be on this panel. But um, Jasmine and I felt like it really spoke to, to who our UCF students are. Um, they are civically engaged. Um, so she's, she's out doing her, her civic duty right now and serving 
um, on a jury potentially. So I just wanted to introduce kind of her, you can see Nakia here and a little bit of her background. So we are going to now jump into our questions um, and I will let you Jasmine take over with that. Wonderful. So our first question for you all is if you all could briefly describe your experience here at UCF and feel free to draw from a variety of sources from some of the great organizations that you all just listed, right? From your classes, networking opportunities, all of it, just so our employers can get a better, better picture of your time here. I'll go ahead and get started because I believe I have some water fun unorthodox time here at UCF. So hello once again, I am Alexia. And like I said previously, I am a criminal justice and psychology major. However, this does not come easily to me as this is my, <laughs> this was my third major change. When I first entered to UCF, I believe from an immigrant older sister's perspective, I did what I felt like I needed to do, that being in the doctoral track or just overall doing anything health sciences and then trying out law. So, you know, tried out all the big ticket items that your parents would usually like to see. Once I realized that really wasn't for me was when I became involved with the criminal justice field was much my passion from early on, but something in my head had told me, you can't do this, you need to do more. And then I came to realize that with all the opportunities at UCF, I mean, you see the organizations that I'm involved in, we have a direct relationship with various sheriff's office, as well as various nonprofits here at UCF. That's when I really started to hone in into what the criminal justice and psychology fields really have for people here at UCF. And then as far as networking opportunities, we actually, with Lambda Epsilon, one of the organizations that I am part of, we actually host a conference every single spring. And we host it strictly for criminal justice, public service, psychology, just sort of all those sorts of public service related fields. We host it every spring. And that has been just sort of a great preparation for events like this, especially for someone who's not the most adept at public speaking. Things like that have not only exposed me to the professional field and gotten me into the professional lingo and into public speaking, but has also helped out fellow people that you know I work alongside with. So I believe that's my UCF experience so far. A lot of trial and error, but I think it's a good thing at the end of the day. Because I mean, knock it, you know, don't knock it till you try it. That's pretty much how I see things. I'll also jump in here because I think mine is also kind of uh, a little bit unorthodox. I came in uh, during summer semester of last year uh, from Valencia. Uh, so I had spent uh, the latter half of my graduating semester at Valencia um, uh, during COVID, right? Uh, but I came in, it was our first semester fully online, um, starting it online, and it was a summer semester. So all my classes just took off at a speed that I was not expecting, right? Um, and um, that was difficult. It was really hard. I didn't know uh, that there was such a thing as uh, transfer shock, um, but I, I very much felt it. Uh, and it was it was a difficult experience uh, for a couple of months in. Um, but then I, I figured out uh, that if I just got involved, if I just got a group of friends, if I just got um, some sort of human connection to the university, I would be okay. Um, and so I started looking into it and I found a wonderful organization, Transfer Nights, which I should have mentioned in my intro, uh, but I'm their vice president now. Uh, and in that application process, I started, I met a, a wonderful group of friends um, whom I, I still hang out with and we, we have a ton of fun. Uh, and uh, through that experience, uh, I, I then got involved with student government and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of things that have happened um, sort of unconventionally, um, not through class time or through um, exams or through anything else. It's a lot of experiences that I've learned and, and lessons that I've learned through experiences. Um, so uh, that's that's the thing that really feels like my experience at UCF more than the classes that I've taken. So that's me. I'd like to add in a little bit on that. Um, Unlike them, I think I had a very traditional upbringing when it comes to college. I came to college, moved from Miami to Orlando, and I think I was ex um, expecting to fall right into place at the beginning. And just, just like every other student, you kind of have that hiccup at the beginning. And I had just that. Um, luckily enough, I was able, because of the College of Business at UCF, it is so open and so diverse. And the networking that you get in the College of Business, I feel like 
is unmatched to anything I had experienced before. So through all the networking events that we have at COBA, I was able to join my professional business fraternity Delta Sigma Pi, where I had an intense pledging process where I learned so many hard and soft skills um, that I was able to translate into so many different professional aspects of my life. And not only that, I was also able to work for career services, which <clears throat> I'm sorry, took my skills to a whole nother level. I was challenged in so many ways that I feel um, shows you what UCF does for its students. It challenges you and definitely makes you go out of your comfort zone, which is what I love the most about UCF, working at Career Services, being in COBA, just all of it combined um, made my UCF experience thus far so amazing and so rewarding at the same time. All right, thank you all. For our second question, we've talked a lot about your leadership experience, but let's talk about um, some other skills, right? So what are some what are some other skills and some other qualities that you all gained from your other organizations? And to add to that, what are some of the skills you're gonna be proud to tell employers, potentially the ones here when they're, when they're hiring? I'll jump in this one first because this is my my favorite question. I'm sorry, Desmond. No, go ahead. Um, <laughs> um, this is my favorite question because it was sort of the hardest one to quantify. Um, I mean, I, th I think a lot of things that I've learned uh, are obvious, like you know, organization and uh, and timeliness and communication with my peers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I think those things can be learned basically anywhere. Um, I think the thing that I was able to point out. Uh, as the single thing that, as a single lesson that was most important to me uh, from my time at UCF and at Transfer Nights, especially, um, was the the fact that I learned the importance and how to create community. Um, and I think that's a very difficult thing for most uh, companies to do. Um, even even internally, it's hard to create a community uh, of of work and of um, you know, striving for better uh, for better outcomes, uh, but also a community of of people around your company and around the work that you do um, that really care, right? Um, and that care about uh, the world and the, everything that's happening. Um, so I think through transfer nights, through understanding that even online we can create those communities, um, and that even um, even through a screen or through a, uh, a message board, people want and seek that, um, that social connection um, was really, really important and vital for me to learn. And I think that's the skill that I'm most proud of um, and being able to take to employers and being able to tell them like, I will be able to do this. If you give me a Slack channel, I'll be able to do it. If you give me a Discord, I'll be able to do it. If you give me uh, a Zoom call, if you give me an event, whatever it is, I'll be able to create that community. I think that's super important. So mine kind of goes hand in hand what Julian was gonna say, which is perfect because backtracking a little bit into September where, um, well, not even September when the pandemic first happened and we were forced to transition. And this happens with every company, every organization, every person that obviously went through the pandemic, like we had to really adapt really quickly and be extremely innovative in the ways that we do things. Not only was I being like, I was able to be innovative and adapt super quick because of my job at Career Services, or whether it be my um, position that I first had at my organization in the fall, learning how to build that community like Julian was talking about was a huge skill that I learned and I honed in on as well. And it's all about that adaptability and innovation that I was able to do the things that I did successfully. And it wasn't for all the, if it wasn't for all the examples that were set by UCF, it, I don't think it would be possible for many of us to have been able to do what we did at the time. Yeah, Alexia or Giamari, would you, do you have anything you want to add? I can add a bit more, but Giamari, would you like to go? All right. Um, I would say that for me, other than obviously the sense of building community, especially a virtual community, which is something hard to do, and also adaptability, which again has a huge component of everyone's lives for this past year, 
a little bit of a strange skill that I came to gain from what I, my friends dubbed my path to uh, presidency or the club that I'm in. I actually started out with a lesser role, uh, a bit more of a fun role in the role of historian. And I redid our entire club social media and just completely revamped it. So I went literally just straight out of curiosity and because I wanted to get our club a bit more out there since the criminal justice department is so small, you know, I started experimenting with things like Photoshop, things like Illustrator, video editing that I now take and I can utilize in all the other roles that I do. And with my involvement with Career Futuros as well, which again, like I said, it's a Hispanic mentorship program. I also learned to do a good bit of translation services for formal documents, which I was relatively okay at before, but now with this, since I am providing translating services to some of my mentees, especially those that are newer to the US, that has been also something that I have been able to take. So things that realistically don't have much to do with the criminal justice field, but that do become, you know, a mix of soft and hard skills that I can utilize in the future and can also do them for fun because sometimes I just like editing photos for fun. And I learned that because I needed to do it for our club social media. <laughs> Wonderful. GMR, did you have anything you want to add? No, I have for the next question. Awesome. Let's continue then. So tell us a little bit more about how you've taken advantage of some of the resources and the opportunities here at UCF. Things like maybe our office, right, career services or experiential learning or even some of the other departments or organizations you may be affiliated with. Yeah, so I would say from a graduate student perspective, the most important resources are professors. Um, for health administration, a lot of our professors were actually past CFOs, COOs, and CEOs for hospitals and health systems. So it's nice that, um, so my background was actually biomed, my undergrad was biomed, and I kind of wanted to learn more about the administrative side of healthcare and business. And it's nice seeing going from a slide and memorizing slides to actually having discussions, talking about case studies, because when you're working in real life, you're not going to be memorizing or talking about facts. It's more about what you think um, when something's thrown at you or in different cases, like I mentioned. So I feel like for me, our professors were the best resources to have. And they also give us, um, they have an extensive network too. So we also have been able to meet um, different executives for Orlando Health or Advent Health. And that also helps with finding jobs or internships too. Awesome. Anybody else have anything they want to add? I can go ahead and add for career services. Um, besides working there, obviously, like I see a lot of like the firsthand help that it provides to any students from cover letters to resumes to finding a job to finding an internship anything it is like I see it firsthand and how much it changes students lives. Um, and I, but prior to working there, I honestly never went to career services because the College of Business does have their own like little mini career services. It's called Office of Professional Development, which helped me a lot throughout my first semester at UCF from really honing in on the good skills on my resume to making a perfect cover letter to all that. It really helped me. Career services just helps the entire UCF community, which I love. And not only that, they're constantly hosting different events like um, our career fair and our internship fair and all those amazing events that anybody can attend to. And just, we have so many employers come out um, from different workshops to employers themselves giving mock interviews. Um, I've personally done those and it's helped me so much to even getting an internship this summer on something I'm truly passionate about. So I just think the things that UCF offers truly helps any and every student. I'll go ahead. Uh, I wanted to get people to answer first, but let me tell you, I have scalped UCF of their resources and let me tell you how. So uh, like I said, I am a first generation student. My parents do not have a lot of money. If you look at the Venezuelan currency, it's uh, essentially you can use Venezuelan currency as toilet paper. So for me, I have need, I had the need to take advantage of all the UCF resources, whether it comes to obviously Bright Futures, we're very lucky that Florida has such an extensive you know, use of Bright Futures. Uh, also learning about what my tuition covers, for example, that every single student is entitled to primary care directly from the UCF offices. You also have a discount when it comes to dental and optical care. That is something that we let our freshmen and transfers know every single time that we have a club meeting. 
we always joke around that when, if a guest speaker goes to cancel, we always do the old reliable, that being, hey, here are the resources that are open this spring. Hey, make sure that you check up with counseling and psychological services, whether it is for mental health purposes or whether it is that you want to do a QPR training. So I believe it's question, persuade resources, but essentially it's like suicidality training to prevent those sorts of things. You know, there's a bunch of different workshops that you can do with career services. We haven't even had guest speaking events with career services. We have career services at our fair. You know, we've had them at job fairs. There's just a variety of different opportunities that you can make use of both as a student and as a student leader, because there's also exposés such as these where you can talk about your organization and get students to join. There's plenty of networking events. I think UCF is not only a very diverse campus, but also there are so many opportunities. You just need to learn about them. And realistically, their website is pretty accessible. And then I think that it is the responsibility of every single student leader to let their members know what they have access to. And the most basic being access to healthcare, access to you know clean and overall gender inclusive bathrooms, and even access to except not sorry, not excessive, accessible counseling and psychological services. So I would say that those are the most important resources. And then obviously it varies as it comes to the department. I will say the criminal justice department, even though it's small, we have nine different scholarships. Some departments only have three. So realistically, your experience at UCF and the resources that you utilize, you have to ask for them and you have to search for them, but there's plenty of them out there. And that's my experience. Wonderful, thank you everyone. Thank you for highlighting a, a plethora of resources that we have that I know not, not, not only do not all students know about, I mean, sometimes some employers may not know either. So that was great. Next question, so how has UCF prepared you for life after graduation? This might be something GMR I can even <laughs> answer it in too, right? As from the graduate and the undergraduate side. Um, and what are some of the things that you want employers to know about UCF and our students that maybe you haven't said already? Yeah, so I can start. Um, I feel like for us, um, we before we graduate, we have to do an internship. And it's amazing because I feel like, so I actually went to USF for my undergrad and um, it's interesting that for biomed, you don't really have a lot of internship experiences. It's all about research or um, networking isn't a big thing. So I've learned a lot about networking in my last two years at UCF, especially how we have an ex extensive alumni network. So I feel like how UCF has prepared me is um, there's organizations like ACHE, which is the American College of Healthcare Executives. And within that, we can volunteer with them and actually work close together with different executives for, um, like I mentioned, Orlando Health, um, Advent Health, Health Fairs. So it's nice being able to know how to communicate with potential bosses or employers. And again, the internships really help too. I'll add on to that, that I think like the biggest way in which UCF has prepared me is by making me really independent. I think at a school that's this large, um, there's simply no way that they can pay attention to you all the time um, and that anyone can babysit you. So they don't. Uh, and so you just have to uh, work hard and, and push through uh, some of those things. Uh, and you do have that uh, support system that uh, everyone was just talking about in those resources. Um, but uh, that's, that's something you can fall back on, but it's not something you can um, just uh, ride the wave through, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's, uh, it's really important to, to have that independence. Um, but I think the second part of this question is super interesting to me. Um, because I think, um, this is where it gets really uh, interesting to you guys, to the employers. Um, and, and I think like the biggest thing that I would tell you about UCF students, um, is we're ready. Um, you know, we come out, uh, understanding um, what the world looks like more than um, even we know, um, we might be a little bit scared, uh, but that doesn't mean that we're not ready. Uh, we are, um, we have all the, all the skills, all the preparation. Um, we'll need a little bit of your understanding, obviously, uh, because you cannot have um, an entry level job uh, in, in some places without having a lot of experience, right? Um, but if you just give that chance, um, you'll be really surprised with just how good we are. Because um, if you, you know, I'm sure you are just as I am impressed by the people who are speaking in this panel. Um, but this is such a large school that for each one of us, there's 10, 20, 30 students who are more impressive, who are more um, 
uh, involved who just haven't didn't happen to, to to get this opportunity to speak to you. Um, but we got a lot of students um, who are really eager to to work in your companies uh, and to um, really grow. go ahead and finish off if that's all right. But I would say, once again, I, it seems I'm speaking a lot about criminal justice, but that's obviously where I have my most experience. But honestly, UCF has prepared me and like essentially cushioned me into career in the criminal justice field because of the amount that relationships and partnerships that we have, even with the small club as we are, because realistically, you know, we're friends with UCF PD, we have Orlando PD, we have Osceola, we're building our relationship with St. Cloud. And then also even with Altamont Springs that you wouldn't think that we really have a relationship with, we have internships, we have volunteering, we have tons of guest speakers. Sometimes we even have three guest speakers every single week for our students, just for them to learn about the field. And it's not strictly police work. There's a lot of opportunities within our field that a lot of people don't know about. Because like I said before, I, I think that individuals are all multifaceted and we have all sorts of different skills and you just have to learn more about your field. And UCF has really prepared me to just get to know what I want to do. Same with like graduate graduate services. For example, I want to pursue a criminology, you know, graduate degree, whether that is a master's or eventually I shift it into a PhD if I want to commit like six years of my life <laughs> to be determined for that one. But, you know, UCF has plenty of different resources for us to realistically find out what graduate school is about and for us to really see if this is the correct thing for us. I forget the name of the service. I know that they work directly with career services, but they help first generation and underprivileged students to get into graduate school. Someone state the name of the service. I think it starts with like an A, it's like advancement program. I, I forget the name exactly, but I'm gonna be coming friends with them this year. Academic and, advancement programs. Thank you, academic advancement program. So that is a resource that a lot of people utilize. And you know, people that me, that are gonna utilize that in the future for us to get our masters. There's other people, for example, within our club that's strictly out of undergrad, they're getting hired, you know, federal from the experience that they have being here at UCF, not only from the classes, from the professors, which I'll say a lot of our criminal justice professors have written the textbooks, we utilize their textbooks, uh, you know, take that as we go. <laughs> Maybe they write them for us to buy them, but they're really good. And we have a lot of interactive classes. They teach us extremely well when it comes to the in-person classes. I can tell you that I've learned so much about interviewing and just overall the processes behind the criminal justice system, strictly from going to those office hours, from going to the events, from going to the networking events. And if that's not the greatest preparation for just after graduation, whether there is graduate school or in the job field, you know, I can't tell you what would be a better preparation other than literally going out and getting it. Like Julian said, there's a lot of different resources, but we're a big school. You gotta dip your foot in and go ahead and you know, jump in. You can't really be afraid, especially at times like these when everything is so uncertain. You just gotta go get it. That, that's what you gotta do at UCF. And I think every UCF student is a go-getter. Beautifully said, everyone. Yes, it's the Advancement Academic Program. Thank you to Courtney and Lachey for that. Moving on to our next question. What type of employer information stands out to you? Is it things via email, maybe your social media sites, maybe through your clubs and your organizations? Can you repeat the question? It cut off for me, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. So what type of employer information stands out to you? So is it is it through your social media? Is it different targeted emails? Is it information through your clubs and organizations? This is a really good one to for our employers, right? To give them the feedback of what works for you all. I can go into that. Um, personally, I feel like what attracts me most to an employer, especially if it's a company I'm not too familiar with, is when they come out and speak in any of the events that I'm in, whether that's directly with my organization or they have done a workshop with career services and I happen to be interested in the name of the company or I look it up on my own. But definitely being exposed to the UCF population is extremely helpful when you don't exactly know the company or the, the industry that they're in, but you would like to get more experience in that industry. Um, I think those help a lot. But other than that, if I don't normally gravitate to those um, employers that do show up to workshops and events, I love to see different employers on our handshake, which I know is really weird, but I'm always browsing on our handshake. So looking through handshake and seeing different companies on there and like just going and researching these companies and making sure it's what I want or their values align to mine, that's super helpful as well. Um, I would just say, you know, that 
showing up. The, the showing up part is extremely important to me and I know it is to so many students. And something that Jasmine just said is really important. Um, I mean, obviously everything she did, but uh, I think like it's good to see you on LinkedIn, to see you on event, to see an events and handshake and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think it's important to understand your values as a company. Uh, I think students really care uh, when they see uh, a company who comes out uh, in the forefront on social issues. Uh, on um, I, actually, you don't know how many how many conversations I've been in where someone mentions like those Ben and Jerry infographics uh, about like social justice stuff, um, and and those things matter, right? Um, you know, it's it's hard to to um, to come out in the forefront in some of those things. Um, and obviously you can't sometimes, uh, but I think students really appreciate it. Uh, and you will get a lot more um, that you get, you get noticed when you do those things. Um, and of course, like I said, uh, LinkedIn, Handshake, uh, all, those, all those events, as well as just reaching out to um, the actual uh, uh, major uh, advising people. They will give you a lot of information sometimes, uh, and they'll they'll put you in the right path. And sometimes career services will finish off uh, and really uh, really hone in on on that. If I could piggyback off of Julian, I also agree with LinkedIn um, for graduate school. LinkedIn is a major resource for us, and also talking to our advisors. Um, just because they do always send us emails about different uh, work opportunities, internship opportunities. So those are two great resources in the graduate side. I'll break the three people answering questions just strictly for this because I haven't heard it from anyone. I apologize about that. But I will say, um, do not send generic emails to student organizations. If it's like, hello, insert corporation, I'm not answering the email. We usually don't waste our time with that because we see that our time is not being valued if they're not really researching. For example, a merchandising company contacts us. We don't, we can't even do merchandising for our club. We have a national chapter. That, that's a big red flag that we see. Um, social media, if I see updated social media or if an organization even has social media, that's already a plus. I mean, we live in the modern age. If pretty much all of your employers and interns and volunteers are gonna have social media, you should have social media for your company as well. It's updated, it's clean, doesn't have to be the most pristine thing out there. It doesn't have to be like amazing 10 out of 10, but just having something out there for people to research really helps out. Websites, make sure that you update your websites. I don't think that any person, especially a student, if they're looking to get an internship, they're looking to get a job. If I see a website that's older than me, looks older than me, doesn't, <laughs> you know, it doesn't really look well or reflect well on the employer or the experience that I might have there. Again, it's not to say that you have to have a stellar website, but if your website, <laughs> it takes me like three years and then I can't really find the information that I need on the website, it is not appealing to the student or I think even to other employers to just kind of look at that. And then as well as other further information, something that really stands out to me is, uh, I know some students are afraid of phone calls, but I actually quite enjoy phone calls. For example, if a guest speaker of a company, they wanna you know, be a guest speaker, they wanna participate with us, even do a partnership, even if they're like, hey, do you mind if we do a 10 minute phone call from this time to this time or in this day for us to really go over and go over the specifics of that? I love that. Be as direct and as specific as you can be in the email and on your website and make it accessible. Because if I have all the information that I need, I will provide you all the information that you need for me. And then it makes it easier for both of us to collaborate in the long run or for me to apply as an intern, for me to apply as a potential you know, employee. So long as you know everything about me, I also want to know pretty much everything about you and what I'm getting myself into. I think that's what we all need, really, <laughs> reciprocity, if that makes any sense. Can I add something to that? I know it's a little bit back and forth, sorry. And I just want to wholeheartedly agree with Alexia, because this is more of a call to action to employers, because as students, we know that it is extremely competitive for the job searching or internship. We know it's competitive. We know it's hard. Um, we are constantly applying and applying and applying to different places. And the worst thing ever is when we're applying and companies don't really see us as potential candidates, or even if we're not candidates, just an email back or something nice like that would be extremely, um, I think it would just show, it would want us to try more for your company. Um, and we understand that it's competitive, but we just want to be recognized as um, students who are trying to get a job. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. I'll do one last comment in that whole 
feel because again, that's, it's the same thing. You want to be recognized. And at the same time, going in that same like hand to hand, I want to know all the information that I'm going to require for this job because I want to know off the bat if I am underqualified or even overqualified for this so neither of us waste our time. Because at the end of the day, if I apply for a position and I don't really know what I'm getting into and then I find out later when comparing my resume to the other person that's applying next to me and I don't see things you know, going well, if I know that interview is not going to go well, it's just wasting everybody's time. So, so long as I know what I'm getting into, like obviously you want to be valued as an individual and you want to see that the company has just overall like good, good vibes, I, I suppose you could say. But also, you know, at the end of the day, you guys are looking for employees or for interns or for volunteers and I'm looking for an experience that will help me in my professional development. So let's just be honest with each other and make sure that we both know what we're getting into. Fantastic points, everyone. I see the employers nodding vigorously. So I'm sure everyone, everyone's really gotten something out of that last question. All right. So we have two more questions left before we open it up to employers. So just giving you all a timetable. They still have plenty of time. Um, question six. What types of opportunities are most attractive to you? Also, picking it back off of off of that that last question. In the spirit of what Alexia just said, of being honest with each other, uh, money, <laughs> money is attractive. Like there's there's nothing I can um, that we can say other than that because I think it, it's really important to have those entry level jobs, um, and and uh, a lot of us have worked some of those or will be working some of those. Uh, but I think ultimately you get to a point where uh, you have to start thinking of of what um, a future uh, looks like, right? And what a stability looks like, and uh, and and only through uh, opportunities for growth that you get there, right? So you might be hiring us um, as part timers, but with the possibility of joining your company full time with benefits later on, you know what I mean? Um, and, and it's important to understand those things. Um, and it's important, I've learned to ask those things, right? Do I have opportunities for growth here? Do I have, um, do I have the possibility to get blank position in, in the future? Um, those are the types of things that really matter. Uh, and in companies who really care about, about their, their employees, those things are easy and those things are, um, are mutually uh, communicated, right? Um, and and I think that's extremely important. Um, but yeah, I think opportunities for growth, and then also uh, opportunities for connection with with other uh, potential companies. If your company is good enough, um, we will not leave you, right? So don't be scared to allow us to network, to um, to to you know to do all those things. I think some people often are. Um, and, and these are very specific experiences, but uh, sometimes it's important to know um, that your employees value that opportunity to network with others. Uh, and, and yeah. Personally, for me, I would want to say the opposite of Julian. Monetary compensation is not what drives me. Um, and obviously there's nothing bad about any of it. Um, I think for me more is like, the opportunity to learn, especially if I'm going into something that I haven't really been experienced a lot in the past, that opportunity to learn and to be extremely hands-on in your company is probably the most valuable thing that or opportunity that a company can give me. So if I'm going to be hands-on and I'm going to come out of the internship or entry-level position knowing a plethora of more information that I did before, then that is worth more to me than the monetary compensation I would get from it. And the networking that I will get from that job is also extremely important to me because if I do end it by your company or if I don't, just having that network is probably as valuable as the things that I will learn there. But of course, monetary compensation is always nice. <laughs> Yeah, that um, and the money. <laughs> I, I would say that for me, I really want to talk to the people that were in my position. So for example, I want to see your employees, interns, volunteers, whatever it may be, you know, a year from now, I want to talk to them. I want to get to know a feel of the office or, you know, nonprofit, whatever it may be. I want to see what people are doing right now, what I'm going to be doing right now. And then what I'll be doing a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Like Julian said, it's a matter about growth. And I think with the money question, uh, frankly, yeah, I, I personally, I know that in the criminal justice field, especially not being a citizen yet, 
I mostly work with nonprofits now. Obviously, with nonprofits, there's not the what do you say? <laughs> there's not a lot of opportunities for paid internships. However, with other internships, because they are more intensive, they obviously do offer though minimum wage. That's not an issue at all. They do offer paid opportunities. The way that I see it is in a field that's competitive, and with things being as competitive as they are now, and you having dozens and dozens and hundreds and thousands of students applying for the same things. I don't think that it's selfish or that it's bad to be compensated for your work because at the end of the day, you are putting in work. You know, I'm not asking for 17 an hour. <laughs> That's not what I'm asking, not at all. But I think just being compensated for the work that if you're doing, if I'm putting 20, 30 hours every single week, you know, I'm sorry, but I, I have rent to pay. You know how horrible rent is in Orlando? <laughs> you know, I, I have things that I need to do. And I'm putting in time and work and effort into your company. So while it's not necessary, I do think that it is important nowadays. And so it's not necessary again, but it is attractive. It's definitely attractive to see that when I see the internships that are paid, I know these ones are going to be more work, but I'm going to be learning a lot more. They are paying me because this is an experience that is a lot more intensive and rewarding, as you would say. Not to say that the unpaid ones aren't rewarding or anything, but I would argue that if uh, they're looking for so many people that they are paying, it's probably for a reason. You know, I, I know that a couple of friends that are uh, interning for Osceola, Orange County, those are pretty, you know, intensive internships. Again, they're 20, 30, and even for the summer, there are 40 hours that you're doing. So you are compensated for your time. Well, other internships, I'm currently doing an internship that is unpaid. It's for a nonprofit, and I have serious issues about that. It's fun. I like it. It's 20 hours a week. But I understand that in the whole internship field and gaining experience like that, you know, you have to admit that there's a bit of privilege involved if you're just able to pump in 20, 30 hours a week and you don't really have to get paid for it. So, you know, take that as you will when you're looking for applicants and then as far as other things that I'd see when I'm attractive again looking at people that are in my position and I want to get to talk to the people that I'll be working with not only as my co-workers but also my superiors I think that it would be really nice if I can sit down with my potential boss or bosses or managers whatever it may be and just get to know them a little bit not only from what they can bring me on the corporate sense but also I just want to get to know them as individuals because I think if you take the fear out of oh this person is like how many like notches up in the totem pole? You know, I'm terrified to even look at them in the eye in the office. If you take that for your way, I think it would just make for an even more worthwhile work environment. So long as you really get to know the people that you're working with, you know, we don't have to be best friends or anything. But so long as you take the fear out of the office, even on the first week, if you're like, hey, let's get everyone to know each other. This is what you're going to be doing. There's different opportunities that you have that you could be doing. You can choose the track that you're doing. Things like that, I think are really nice. And it's the reason why I stayed with my internship, even though there were you know, other paid internship opportunities, it's strictly because not only do they see me as an individual, they give me options as far as what I would want to do based on my skills, but also they just literally, they get to know me. They, you know, we scheduled Zoom calls. We're like, hey, this Zoom call is nothing, you know, don't expect us to be doing any work today. I just wanna to get to know all the new people at the office. Things like that are just really nice and are what drive me to seek those opportunities. So that's my take on that. I'll add one last thing here. Um, I think another thing that's really attractive to me specifically is the ability to be creative in the work that I'm going to be doing. Um, I think the uh, the openness of an employer to give you creative um, freedom uh, is really, really important, especially for a generation, because another thing that UCF students are is you know resourceful and um, and and smart about the things that we do, right? And and we will find better ways to do some of the things that you're already doing, right? So be open to those things. Be open to us telling you like you know maybe you should use this platform. Actually, maybe let's let's think about this, right? Um, and and you know we'll be cognizant that we're trying to change the system, but I think like our generation, as you can clearly tell, um, is here for that, right? Like we are here to change. Uh, we're not gonna stay quiet. Uh, and I think the ability to be creative is extremely important in the job, so. Wonderfully said everyone. And for our last question, what sort of employer branding is most memorable or distinct to you and your colleagues? I'll go ahead. Um, Maybe this is not memorable in the correct way, more so in the negative way, but I tend to steer away from companies and, you know, offices, whatever you may call them, that call themselves a family. I, I know that there is a very clear distinction about Alexia, who I am as an individual, and Alexia, who I am as an employee or intern. 
So a lot of places that I see that like we're a family, you know, family environment, this and that, I tend to steer away from that sort of environment because I really, I like us to get to know each other as individual, but to an extent, I, I really want to see places that are really professional and are like, here are your assigned jobs. Again, you have the freedom to do this. You can choose whatever pathway you do. But like I said, I, I don't want to be best friends with my coworkers or with my boss. I just want to get to know them so I'm not scared of them. <laughs> like that, that's as simple as it is. So places that have allowed me at, you know, to get to know the people, but also they're not like, hey, best friend, want to put in like 10 extra hours, you know, steer. I usually steer away from those places because it's just not, not a good time. But I will say, as far as positive branding, things that I have seen, especially with the criminal justice field, that it's very old. So a lot of things are not updated. When I see updated social media, when I see places that, have updated websites or that, for example, e even something as small as having your banner on an email, things like that, I'm like, whoa, that's cool. Or, you know, if they address the emails, maybe like even pronouns in the emails, when I see that in police departments, I'm like, whoa, that's new. You know, think the small as that. Uh, branding specific, I can't say that I recall anything because again, I don't, in, in my field, <laughs> I don't do any like marketing or anything that would involve branding. So I apologize for that. But just seeing a little bit of creative things here or there, like customized Zoom backgrounds, maybe your banner and an email, making sure that the email is actually like personal to whoever you're writing it to, whether it be like the actual organization or, you know, the individual, things like that. I'm like, whoa, okay. I remember, I remember Altamonte Springs because they had their banner there and they kept direct and open communication with me. Even if they were to, you know, one time they canceled on me because, you know, things came up, you know, they're, they're police officers. Sometimes things come up here and there. Just the fact that they called me a day ahead, emailed me and offered me a replacement, things like that really helped me out. And I still remember, and I have a great partnership with them. So I would say that your most memorable or the best branding that you could do with potential students is just realistically being honest. And then if you have like, you know, updated, clean and neat, just social media and websites, that really helps out a lot. I mean, not, nothing better than just seeing something clean and concise. That, that's how I see it. I think Alexia kind of sums it up all in the best possible way. Um, when it comes to branding for a company, just being the most authentic self and translating into your social media and your websites, like what you stand for as a company is what attracts us the most, especially now with social media being so important. And it's what we go to for everything. Um, just seeing that and making sure that all of your information online translates and just how do I say this, like is a representation of your company in its full authenticity, then that's what attracts us the most. And just making sure that the people who are working for you and that we are communicating with back and forth do translate that as well. Because the worst thing is you're emailing somebody in your company and their company is like this great, positive, supportive um, company. And then the people emailing you just don't come off that way. So just making sure that everybody is translating and being their authentic self. I think that goes so far, especially when you're trying to recruit employers, students. <laughs> yeah, authenticity is extremely important. Um, you can tell when a company is trying to be a little bit too woke, right? Uh, you can tell when a company is trying to do a little bit too much. We, we say you're doing too much. Um, and, um, and, and that's that's really, really um, vital because if you are trying to reach out to communities um, by being inclusive, by being uh, open to um, to conversations about about difficult subjects, um, you need to really be ready for those conversations, right? There's like, you know, like you you can't you can't be Amazon and be um, and be really open to a conversation about workers. Um, uh, uh, worker time hours and conference, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's hard, right? Those things, um, those things are uh, often go against some of the um, basic uh, tenets of what a company needs to do, which is like technically profit, 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 right? Those are the only things that, that a company technically cares about. But if you care about your employees, if you care about the community um, that, uh, that you're serving, um, then you need to have an authentic image. Um, and, that, and that goes from everything. Like sometimes sometimes when, when a company redesigns their logo to be a little bit more like them, to be a little bit more friendly, people notice that. And then when they redesign their logo, no matter how good it looks, and it doesn't look like that company, people also notice that, even if they don't know what they're noticing. 
So, um, so yeah, I think authenticity is extremely important. Jasmine. All right. So not to, not to cut everyone off, but we definitely want to open up this time for the employers for the last few minutes. So if anybody has a question, feel free to type in the chat. If anybody wants to ask a quick question of Mike, that should be fine too. Is that okay, Courtney Belfry? Absolutely. Perfect. I feel like we should be playing Jeopardy music, just like do do do. If I could actually say one last comment, I think it's also important to um, focus on your community involvement. Like I feel like from a healthcare perspective, we're really focused on um, how you're trying to help your community progress and how you're really trying to be there and support them, whether it's um, donating or having people from your organization volunteer. I think it's really important because it makes you, it makes at least how everyone else has been saying, we're really empathetic. We like to see how the company, like their values, what they're involved with. And especially here in Orlando, we really like to be involved in our community. So I think that's important to also consider. I have a question. Uh, my name is Carolyn Ovitz and I work with Megacorp um, Logistics. I know that there's a lot of logistics companies that are out there. You've probably heard a lot of them. Um, you might have a bad taste or have heard bad things about them. Um, so we, we're definitely different, which is great. But my question is that, um, you know, how, how open do you think students are to being in a career that is not necessarily their major, right? So if you're a marketing major, you think that you're going to go into marketing, which is great. If you're a communications major, you know, obviously, you know, you might do something with, you know, politics or advertising or whatever. So what my company, I'm the only recruiter, I've got five offices, right? So I'm it, I call myself the culture keeper. Like that's kind of what my unofficial title is. Um, so what, what we look for, and, and other sales roles are like this too, where, you know, it's more a personality type than it is a check the box on what you studied in school, right? It's all the things that you guys are saying, which are, you know, amazing. And so as I start recruiting um, at this awesome college, um, which I've had great help with, you know, I'm not a check the box, I'm not a check the box career path, right? It's a great career path to be in, but you know, how open are students, do you think, to, you know, looking at things that are outside their major and having like an open mindset to a different career path? I can go into that really quick. Um, I think we're extremely open to that. And I want to say this more on a like um, the college of business ask, like mindset, because I have had accounting majors who go for sales roles because they found their true passion in sales role. So I think we, any student from across any majors, not only a business, but I think they're open to it with the right coaching that you get when you go into the company, as long as we're coached and we're kind of taught what to do or what to not do. And that training aspect, then I think that they, any major can be successful in anything. And I think they'd be open to it going into knowing that they'll be trained, if that makes sense. <laughs> I agree with that too. I, um, so I'm actually interning at a healthcare tech startup and I was not expecting it just because I started out um, helping out with the product and project management side. And now I'm actually helping out the sales operation side with like RFPs, making sure the sales pipeline is and mind you, my background is biomedical science and healthcare admin. So it's a completely different thing, but I've actually found my passion and I really like it. So I do think students are willing to do something that's outside of their field. So if there was like an opportunity for like a guest speaker or something to just talk about, because we, we are Jacksonville, so we're in Jacksonville, it's our newest office. Um, so we're not known yet people don't know who we are um and so like if if there was an opportunity to do like a seminar or a workshop or something like that like i mean do you think that people would be i mean you guys have a great network of students that you know around campus like do you think people would be open to hearing from you know a profession that might not have the best reputation 
but a company that's found a way to do it differently where people are happy, like would people be, would students be open to that? Because I'll go talk to anybody, like, I don't care. <laughs> I think they will be. And I think there's so many different opportunities at UCF for you to come out and recruit, like our career um, fairs and our internship fairs. I, I even starting in an internship fair would like, I mean, doing an internship for your company would be extremely helpful because you'd get students who are very entry level and don't know really where they're headed. And if they end up falling in love with it and you offer them a full time things perspective like that, then I think they would really enjoy that. And like you said, your company is doing it very different. And I think just a student knowing that I, it changes their perspective totally, completely. So I, I think it would be really great if you were to do any of those things. I'll add as a last comment here uh, for Ms. Ovitz that absolutely, I think that especially now with the job market, everyone and everyone is like just trying anything and everything. So I really wouldn't be afraid of, you know, students perhaps being, you know, a little bit afraid of going into the field of logistics. Like on a personal experience, the number one thing that I said when I started working in criminal justice, I will not work with kids. I don't want to have anything to do with kids. And then I found the company that I'm currently working with which is Paving the Way Foundation, and they're a child trafficking. And just because of them being like, we're going to offer training on the job, you're going to get to know the different opportunities that you have to do that doesn't necessarily, that you might cater a bit more to what you wanted to do, which I wanted to do more so like criminal sexual deviancy investigation. So I go a little bit into child trafficking, just because they offered me, you know, training in the place, they got to know me, they saw my interests, they were like, hey, you're a little bit different than our applicants and you see that you like to do a bit more research. We would like to take over this specific part of research rather than doing what every other applicant is pretty much doing. They listened to me, they saw my skills and they adapted You know, whatever part that they could you know, give me, they gave me that. So I will say to just your overall recap, if you provide people with on the job training and you show them, hey, maybe majority like 80%, 70% of people that are applying to us have graduated with whatever the major for logistics may be, I apologize, <laughs> maybe like math driven or like computer science. But if you tell them, hey, the people next to you is an art major, the person next to you is education and they're working just fine. They're like, you know, they just got a promotion. They just got a race. I think if you let them know that they're not the only anomaly there, I don't see why they want them to apply. So I don't, I don't think you should be afraid at all. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Look for me no. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. We do have a question in the chat from Allison. What information do students want to see on a handshake profile for a company and what social media sites do you all use most? I can go into that as well because I'm on handshake 24-7. Um, I would love to see a brief bio of your company, like what you guys are about, what you do. Job responsibilities and qualifications are also extremely helpful. We want to know if we're overqualified or underqualified. Um, we want to know exactly what we're going to be doing in the job and if we are going to be working with different people. And also include some type of opportunities that you're going to give us, whether that's networking opportunities or a full-time perspective opportunity or just something along those lines, like different opportunities we'll be able to gain in the company. Um, Obviously paid or unpaid would be nice to, to include on there. And I think as far as, um, and other people can chime in, other panelists can chime in once they know which um, social media they use the most. I personally use Instagram the most, but professionally, obviously LinkedIn, I'm on every day. I literally check, my social media goes from email to handshake to LinkedIn to then my Instagram. Like that's my daily like wake up routine. So if you guys can do the same, then that would be nice. I know that when I was looking, so I want to go into the marketing industry and I'm looking specifically into fashion. Um, I was looking a lot on Instagram because that's where most of the fashion companies are. So it just depends on what you're about and what your company and industry is in. So obviously hone in a little bit on that as well. I'll echo what Jasmine said, everything uh, on the handshake side, um, as well as Instagram. I think Instagram is really important uh, for communicating um, with both those audiences, right? Those potential employees, as well as obviously your, um, your customers. Uh, and I think it's, you know, you can tell a lot through a person, through a, a company's Instagram, with, um, account, you can, you can really tell who they are 
uh, and and you can tell how how young their marketing people are. And you can tell you can tell a lot of things. It's really funny. Um, but yeah, Twitter is also very popular um, in in terms of like. Um, especially now that it has 280 characters in creating some things that are a little bit more um, involved in, 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 in um, how do you say that? Whatever, in, 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 in communicating things to your, um, to your audience. So um, both of those are probably really important. Definitely don't use TikTok. Don't, don't. <laughs> Yeah, I said it in the chat that realistically, I've seen a lot more TikTok so companies popping up here and then, and a lot of them are pretty impressive. But I think overall TikTok would really work for individual businesses or like selling products or even like marketing. I don't think that I would go to TikTok for recruiting purposes. I mean, I go to TikTok to like stare at it for two hours and laugh, but every so often I get a company that's selling a product, they have an advertisement. I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I wouldn't really go there for recruiting purposes. A lot of departments do actually have Twitter and Instagram and we see photos of them of doing community service like Jamari stated, or we see them just overall posting about their opportunities. We see stories of them on the job, doing job training or, you know, things like that. Um, I stated in the chat that I am a visual person. So Instagram, I would argue, is probably the easiest social media for a company to get into. Uh, Twitter is also pretty easy, but I, I would argue that Instagram is a bit more famous than Twitter, if that makes any sense to everyone. And also the 280 characters does help, like Julian stated. But I would say as a student, if I am searching for a company, I don't know much about a company. First thing I do is Google them. Second, do, uh, second thing I do is go on Instagram. I don't really check Twitter or anything else because I should know everything about them from the website. And then Instagram is just to see if they have anyone that does social media because it's the easiest one. So they pretty much, that'll be the go-to. Hi, this is Haley Russell from Fisher Investments. First off, thank you so much for all the helpful information. This has been wonderful. Um, I would love to know when companies go to, you know, student organizations or classes for presentations, do you prefer the traditional information session or would you prefer some sort of workshop on an unrelated topic? And if so, what have been your favorite topics? And I know that was a loaded question, so sorry about that. <laughs> I wanted to know if you could speak on more like what type of topics are you specifically talking about? Like, is it related to your company or the field or is it just a random topic? Yeah, great question. So the topic could be anywhere from what do different career paths look like in the company, from what do you do with your first paycheck, or what's the transition like or relocation. So more so an unrelated topic specifically to the company, um, but you know, a workshop that would help you out, such as budget like a boss, and how do you have financial literacy going into your first entry-level role? So personally, I actually love those type of workshops and I've had a couple, I know PFM came to my organization um, last year and they did that rather unconventional workshop because I had never been used to that where um, we went, they obviously spoke about their company, told us they're recruiting and the applications and all that. And then they ended up doing more of like a finance workshop with like a startup financial workshop. And it was really nice because at the time I was really new to UCF. So it was just nice to have that exposure. Um, I've had different workshops with more marketing related companies where they actually would talk to us about what worked and what didn't work when it comes to marketing and what we wanted out there. And they had us kind of like um, brainstorm with a group of people. That's really nice. I know that when certain companies try to do something different like that, and it ends up making the student more nervous than it does help them. So I think it's allowing for that group work and allowing for that different conversation while making sure that the student also feels comfortable, especially if it's a new environment for them. If that helps you, I don't know. <laughs> I'll go ahead as well and say that particularly for off field, what we do when it comes to information sessions like that, because we book and speakers pretty often is we always allow our guest speakers to have anywhere from 30 to an hour, as long as they want to make it. 
And what we always tell them is that realistically, after the 20 or so minute mark, I think people start not paying attention as much, especially if you're just strictly talking the entire time. Like I seriously don't know how people can speak for an hour. My throat just <laughs> dies every time after the 20 something minute mark. So I think so long as you offer your information, here's all the information that you need. Here's some like PowerPoint slides, some visual things for you to like see things. Cause I, I'm a person that's somewhat hard of hearing. So I like to see things visually. It really helps me out a lot. I don't do well, but strictly listening, which is ironic as I'm only speaking right now, but you know, have your information, go through it and allow room for questions. Having panels such as these is extremely important. And you know, the way that we schedule it is guest speakers usually speak for about 20 to 30 if they have a lot of material, they're required to bring PowerPoints. And then also we tell them the number one thing that you wanna do every time you go to a guest speaking event is have the application. So like the internship, the volunteer or the employee application for students to have it right there. If you see someone that's standing out in the crowd right now, you know, put your email in the PowerPoint, put your phone number, put your company's website, because we want, we're going to research this as soon as this presentation is done. So bring opportunities with you, bring offers with you while you're doing the presentation. And as far as workshops, usually what we do is, you know, we give them the hour, the first 20 minutes, they talk about their company, what they do and who they are. And then the other minutes are them either doing a workshop or doing a panel where people are strictly asking them about what they do at their office or what they do at their agency. So I mean, students are curious, especially if you're signing up to a commitment that's gonna be anywhere from six months to a year. So I'd say come prepare for questions and make the material interactive. You know, uh, you know those things that they would do to you in elementary or middle school where they're like, hey, okay, we just went through three slides. Any questions? Does anyone remember what I said about this? It can seem a bit weird <laughs> and it's a bit weird to implement, especially with, you know, other <laughs> college students where it's like, hey, does anyone remember what I stated on slide two? It goes into this slide. Even things like that are just a little bit fun and it's definitely different than the typical, okay, here I am. I'm going to sit for 40 minutes. Feels like a lecture. So, you know, just make things fun, make them interactive and make sure that the people that you're talking to actually care and are paying attention to what you're saying, which is a lot easier to say than, you know, to actually implement. But if students are seeing that you're putting effort into your presentations and actually bringing something worthwhile to them, so like you said, something that perhaps doesn't relate strictly to your company, but is going to give them soft skills, that also helps a lot. But I will just say, don't just speak there for 60 minutes to 90 minutes and not give any room for questions or like even like breathing room for yourself and the students at all because you're just not going to get any good retention all right i want to be mindful of everyone's time um and i know we've covered a lot and i'm sure we could probably students we could ask you questions probably all day because you are such a wealth of knowledge and experience and I just want to thank Jasmine Carter, our fabulous moderator, for, for doing this for us today. And huge round of applause to these four students and all of their you know, variety of student experiences. This has been so enlightening. Um, and we are so grateful that you chose to spend some time answering these questions for our employer partners today. Um, we will, we've recorded this session and that will be shared out um, in the coming weeks. So um, panelists, um, I'll I'd be happy to send you a copy of the recording as well so you can see um, and employers, you can look for an email about that. But thank you all so much for spending your time with us. And I hope that everyone has a fabulous rest of your day. Have a great oh, rest of your day, everyone. Pleasure to see everyone.